Hello, welcome to this next Substance Painter tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to have a, a crack at this um, sort of warhammer-y kind of thing that I've made. Um, so, uh, the, the general point of the tutorial is that we can have one texture, uh, but we can still divide this up into different kind of materials, so wood or metal or leather, you know, and, you know, it's not a problem. So, start off we'll go file and uh, new and then i'll go and select my file so i've got an fbx file here i'll make that available on my uh, kofi site um and I'll, I'll pop a link down below so click open uh we'll put it to 2048 for now uh, everything else is fine and click ok uh, no i don't want that one there we go Okay, so the basic process to split this into pieces is to add folders. So I'm going to delete this default layer here and I'm going to add one, two, three folders. So we'll have a metal folder, a wood folder, and whoops, a leather folder or fabric folder at some point in time. So, to each of these I need to add a black mask. So it's right click and add black mask. And then using the fill tool over here, the polygon fill, we can select parts of our mesh, which we can then add to our mask. So I'm gonna select the chunk fill. And because it makes it easier to see, I'm gonna switch over to the mask channel. And if I select that chunk there, that's my metal. I can go to wood and right click, add a black mask. Need to switch back over to the mask layer and then select the handle and then right click here, add black mask over to my mask channel again and I can pick my leather strap. Now uh, the leather strap is divided into three. Um, it's preferable to have it in one long piece, but the problem is it's so long it distorts everything um, so I prefer to cut it up so that a, all of the um, UV pieces are um, scaled proportionately um, but one's not so long and thin that it cuts down my texture space so I've divided it into three pieces so in this case I just need to select those three pieces rather than just the one piece okay so that's the basic setup. When we come back, we'll add our base materials in and then we'll build them up to, um, you know, form our texture. So I will talk to you in a few minutes. Okay, so we have our uh, groups all set up. That's good. Uh, but before we do any actual texturing, I want to bake the maps on this. So the, the baking the maps, um, basically is most of the power of Substance Painter. Substance um, generators and filters and all those good functions work on the fact that you have baked maps. So if we go to our texture set over here uh, and slide down a little bit, we see mesh maps and they're all empty currently. So I'm gonna click Bake Mesh Maps going to set the um, resolution to 2048 the same as my texture set and then uh, what will we do normal uh, world space ID uh, world space normals I'll turn the ID off I don't use it uh, ambient occlusion curvature position and thickness that's good okay so each of these has their own options so nothing in normals there nothing there but ambient occlusion does uh, I'm going to increase the secondary rays because it will give me a finer map and we have a minimum and a maximum occlusion distance. We may adjust those later uh, but I'm not going to do it now. So curvature I like to put my secondary rays up again and then I put the sampling radius somewhere around the middle and on my position we don't do anything there and thickness I increase the secondary rays again. Okay, so since we've only got one texture here, uh, we can bake this selected texture and it will bake out our maps. 
as I said, you know, this initial bake is just um, a hopeful bake, if you like. Um, it's really right first time, and sometimes we'll bake a map again just to see uh, or just to get a better result out of it. Uh, so, in the next video, I'm going to have a look at through our maps and perhaps talk through them and rebake any that I'm not happy with. So, I'll talk to you then. Okay, so in terms of changing the maps, the one I change most often, um, in fact I rarely change any of the other ones, is the curvature map. So to see the curvature map, we can come up here and come down to where it says mesh maps and then select the curvature map and it will show us what we've got. So what does it tell us? Well, where there is a white angle, uh, that's white as in the colour, um, we get a a, a curvature difference of a particular angle. Where it is a, a black colour, uh, the angle is perhaps the same, except it's in the opposite direction. So we've got one direction here, one direction here, and it gives us then a colour map or a grey uh, map which helps the program understand the mesh. Uh, if you want to adjust it, um, and reasons you might want to adjust it is if your uh, map is particularly monotone grey like this grey here indicates very little curvature if your entire model is that kind of grey or you know close to it then you're not going to get much effect out of the maps at all so we can go back to baking again and I'll save time by deselecting that and just selecting curvature. So we have some options here. So there is relative to bounding box, uh, which is uh, ticked. And if I turn that off and rebake, we'll get a different effect. And you'll see that this is uh, the effect we sort of tried to avoid. Uh, so we won't do that. Uh, so let's go back here. So and back to curvature and relative to bounding box again sorry i'll untick that and you may have noticed because you know i skipped over it and now i'm paying the price uh that when i go back to bash the uh, bake mesh maps this sampling radius is extremely low so if i increase this radius and bake selected again you'll get actually get some sort of effect but it's not yeah it's it's still not good so let me go back to that and reset that back to uh relative and pop that back to the middle and that would be where we started so let's rebake that quickly there we go it's a quick bake and what I, what i want to show you is you know what happens when you increase or decrease that value so if i take the sampling radius down and hit bake we should get a similar map but it's much it's muted there's you know less intensity in it and if i go back and say increase that we should get a much softer uh, but in more intense map so increasing is generally the way I go and I could put that up to 0.1 perhaps and there we go that's quite nice and quite smooth um, there is some sort of harsh cutoffs uh, but across this little beveled curve I've got here that's quite nice one thing I haven't tried for a while so I don't know if it works is whether I can overdo this so if I doubled that no it doesn't doesn't let me over overclock it <laughs> so have a look at your map if it's quite dull adjust it you know it's different from model to model some models you might not have much curvature on some you might have a really a lot um, and you know if you have a sphere for example uh, the map is going to be really boring because the majority of the angles are all the same so just be aware of that curvature doesn't tell you how curved the entire model is it tells you how uh, the angle between one polygon and the next 
okay so that's a quick look at maps um next we'll just block out some colors in this so i'll talk to you soon okay so now we can look at actually putting some materials on this so let me go up to my material real preview and uh let's pop back to our layers so um in the library we can do some searches up here so i want some metal which i'm going to use on the, the hammerhead uh, so if i type metal it will find anything with a whoops got my fingers mixed up there with a metal tag in it and give me uh, some options so i'm going to go for a quite a plain one uh, because i'm going to add some detail to it myself so let's go titanium because that sounds fancy and pop that into the metal folder and then again we can do a search for some woods and i'll use my faithful old wood rough here and drag and drop that in there and finally i want some sort of leathery material there we go uh, let's use this rough one and i'll pop that there so depending upon the uv and the material uh, i might need to make some adjustments here and i can see it on the wood quite plainly you can see the grain is going from left to right but it should be going uh, from top to bottom um so from left to right you know if i hit somebody with this it would just snap in half because it would be weak across the grain uh, so we need to move that around so if i select the wood rough i can go to my rotation pop that at 90 degrees and all is good so that's a, a basic block out and we could go in and just make some sort of adjustments to this uh, for the leather for example um, because I've got it in three strips it's going to leave a mark it's going to leave a seam wherever um, you know it uh, transitions between parts so to get around that I'm going to change this from UV projection to a triplanar projection um, and that will take away control from me for you know the direction of grain and such like but it will hide these seams very well um, but I don't think uh, I need to worry about grain on this too much it looks okay right so that's general blocking out i just want color and everything so i can see it as a whole um and you know when i'm working on particular parts i can you know see a gauge against the rest of the uh, the model so in the next piece we're going to start to develop our metal material we're going to add some um imperf imperfections to it and you know build up a material uh, to get a, a nice result so I will talk to you then okay so um, I've just uh, updated my roughness a little bit it was a little bit shiny so I'm just going to update that just to mat it up a little bit there we go and now I'm going to duplicate this titanium and uh, let's duplicate there we go and uh, what I'm going to do is put some edge wear on this so first of all I'm going to go to my original titanium and I'm going to darken it up a little bit so I'm just going to take the uh, vibrance here and bring that down doesn't seem to be doing anything well it wouldn't do anything because the layer above is obscuring it of course there we go so I want to not have it too dark but just dark enough there we go let's try there now this layer above what it's going to do is going to highlight our edges and for that i'm going to right click add a generator and we'll use the metal edgeware and that's going to use our curvature map for the most part that's interesting uh appears ah i've done it on the wrong uh i've done it on the wrong things my fault first right click and add a black mask and then we'll add a generator to that there we go and now we'll use metal edgeware sorry about that little faux pas 
and there we go so that actually used our curvature map uh, to define where uh, the edges of our model is so that's why it's important to have that nicely defined curvature map if it's not defined you know if you don't get you know nice uh, contrasted values you won't get a nice uh, edge map so uh, we can increase or decrease our wear here I'm going to decrease that a little bit just to make these less solid there we go and uh, we also have our grunge amount now uh, if I turn the grunge amount down you'll see it's just basically a copy of our curvature map um, you know with some variation but uh, the grunge amount basically takes a texture and roughs up those edges so I'm going to increase my grunge amount and that gives me a nice uh, nice look there and uh, the grunge scale if your grunge is getting repeaty so you can see there's some repeating kind of uh, you know features on here you can change the grunge scale so if I take that down I'm going to get larger uh, features but less repeating and if I turn that right up you'll see you know where we're getting these repeating edges or repeating patterns so I'm going to take that down a bit there we go and that's going to give us some you know nice wear so the other thing for this is I want the wear to look slightly differently to uh, my main metal so for this particular one I'm going to go to the titanium pure level and increase the roughness and then on the uh, wear, le uh, wear layer whoops on the layer itself not the mask there we go I'm going to really increase the roughness and now I've got a contrast between the two and you know you can work between the two to you know get the right kind of level I think this should be a bit shinier uh, which means this probably needs to be even shinier there we go now we've got a really you know contrasted um, contrasted areas if I go to the roughness map we'll see the difference there you can see that you know on the face of the hammer where the edge wear isn't appearing it's quite dark and that means it's quite reflective and I'm just gonna adjust that till they're a little bit close together and then on the edges I'm going to increase it so they're a little bit further apart again just to try and get the right kind of level for this material rather than uh, anything else there we go so the other thing I could do here is add in a little bit of um, what am I trying to say a little bit of height so on the second layer I can click on height and increase that height or decrease it depending upon which way you want to go um, but there are drawbacks to this and one of the drawbacks is I can't easily turn it into a normal map so in the next video what I'm going to do is show you how to do that so I shall talk to you then okay so now I want to add some surface information to this I, I want it to end up being a normal map but I'm going to start out with a, a height map so for that um, if I want to put it over everything I can create a new layer uh, but in this case I just want to put it into the um, the edgeware so for that I'm going to right click on the edgeware and add a fill layer so once the fills in I'll alt and click height because I only want to use the height mode and then I'm going to pick a um, a grunge map from over here to give me some height information so if I grab this pebbles no that's not right uh, let's try this paint streak and drop it onto there uh, 
I just want to reset this for the moment there we go that gives me some height information now I can adjust this to you know uh, get a better uh, effect first of all you know I could increase the tiling maybe to two uh, I could increase the strength by lowering the um, the layer of blending value there we go and we can even look here to increase or decrease our contrast to really you know give us that effect let's take the contrast down a bit I want a little bit of variation in between uh, we have a tiling amount we have a rotate yeah that's good okay so that's all well and good um, but I don't want it to be height information I want it to be normal so for that I'm going to right click here and add a filter and the filter we'll use is height to normal and when I add this you should see the effect exaggerate and that's because I'm well it's two reasons we are um, displaying both height and normal information and we have some adjustments to make on the height to normal so if I go to there and switch that over you'll see I've got some very um, extreme colors here uh, so what I want to do is increase my surface level and reduce my height depth and that will let me adjust those to something more sensible so let's go back to the material view and now we've lost all those horrid black artifacts or most of those horrid black artifacts um, and now we've got something a little bit more sensible but we're still displaying both height information which you might just be able to see in there and normal information so for that what we can do is turn off the height essentially by going up to this top layer and on the height channel with the height selected we can turn the uh, layer blend value down to zero <coughs> and now you see we're just showing the normal all of my horrid black artifacts are gone and we're all good everything's you know as it should be okay so i hope that was clear uh, one thing is you might want to turn the normal channel on here on um, it doesn't actually seem to make a difference but it seems to make sense that the top one would have it um, but if at any time you manage to turn the height off here it will all go because this filter relies on the fact that there's height information here um, and then turning it off up here with the layer blend value you know means that it displays correctly okay next we're going to do uh, some more um, imperfections uh, but we'll do it over the whole this time so i'll talk to you then okay just before i go on i've, I've been meaning to switch this to the 3d view only uh, and also i noticed that my height is going the wrong direction i wanted to go inwards not outwards so select that fill layer that's got our uh, noise texture on it and just hit invert and that will do the job there we go okay so i want to do some dirt on this so let's add in a new layer above here a new fill and to this we'll add a black mask and then to the black mask i'll add a generator so the generator will pick his dirt and that should there we go come in quite nicely so dirt uses maps and if you look down here you'll notice that there are a bunch of maps here that um, it's using so curvature ambient occlusion world space normal and position so what we can do uh, for that is we can update it and I'm just going to change the color of this layer for the moment just so it's super visible there we go sometimes helps because you know if it's too subtle <laughs> you can't really tell what you're doing 
So on the dirt, we've got uh, a dirt level, so we can reduce that, of course, and we can increase it. Don't want to increase it too far because it will be way, way, way too much. Uh, we have our triplaner. Uh, if I turn that on, that will uh, project our grunge map on a triplaner basis rather than uh, just the flat UV. Uh, we can have a grunge amount, so I can turn that down. You'll see that there's not coming, not much coming in from our ambient from any other maps essentially on this one uh, so I'm going to increase the grunge amount a little there we go and I'm going to decrease the scale there we go so that it doesn't get too repeaty okay that's across the whole of course which is good um, but I wanted to include some dirt in these uh, cracks and to do that we need an anchor point on this layer so if I right click and add an anchor point uh, I want it at the top of the tree there and then on our uh, dirt layer which is out of the um, it's out of the map uh, out of the folder I'm just going to drag it into the folder there there we go um, so now on that dirt generator I can um, pick up details from that anchor point. So if I click on micro normal down here and then go to anchor points and pick the titanium pure, uh, which is the only anchor point I have, I can then change the um, referenced channel to be the normal. And then a little bit further up, we have micro details. And now I need to enable these for micro normal and you'll see as soon as I do that it's picking up all that normal information uh, but not just um, from the masked kind of areas it's picking it up from everywhere uh, because it's not really taking the mask into account and that's fine uh, because basically you know I want a little bit of uh, interest across everything now one thing i can do here is i can change these parameters to uh, accommodate so if i turn the curvature down nothing happens and that's because it's not really using the curvature it's using the uh, other details so if i increase this you'll find nothing works but then when i start doing the ao radius and the ao depth i can have control so depending upon the map you're inputting uh, whether it be height or normal or even changing the uh, curvation type or curvature type sorry let's switch that to smooth or to standard uh, sobel is the default um, you can adjust all of these you know until you get the kind of effect you want so i want a kind of subtle effect and I don't want it to be red for sure uh, I want it to be kind of bluish so I'm going to pick a kind of somewhere in the middle blue have some uh, grey into that there we go and now we've got that all over uh, but it's a little strong so what I'm going to do for that is just take down this layer opacity using the base colour channel in that case there we go let's have a look around looks good yes there we go so um, I might not actually want to use all of these channels so actually I do want color I'm just gonna alt click color uh, I don't want height uh, I do want roughness and metalness so metalness these are metallic so i'm going to turn it to one um and the roughness i'm really going to turn up because I, I you know these are kind of how can i put it imperfections and they're dug in and worn away you know and should you know um reflect differently to you know the bit all the bits around it so there we go now we have our uh, layer or our dirt layer there um, we can 
further control how this is distributed. Perhaps I don't want it everywhere. So for that, I can right click and add a paint layer to my uh, black mask. And now I can go in, whoops, that's the wrong way around. And if I change my brush to black, I can now start to paint out some of these details. Now, just doing it with a, a straight brush is perhaps not the best idea. Uh, well, it's not the best idea. So if I go to my brushes, uh, what I want is something with a bit of movement to it. Uh, so if I use one of these dirts, there will be jitter on it. If I look at the brush options, uh, we've got size and flow, and then down here we have jitters. So we've got some size and flow jitter, we've got an angle jitter and a position. So as I'm sort of brushing across here, you know, the brush angles and the brush, um, you know, size, etc., etc., will change. There we go. And I can get a more, uh, how can I put it? Uh, you know, less forced look to it if you like. Uh, let's uh, switch up the position jitter. Here we go. I just want to. I don't want to wipe everything out, but I want to wipe enough out to, uh, you know, make it look a little nicer. So especially on the ends there, where you know some it's been hitting things, it would be quite, you know clean I guess there we go so something like that so you're not bound to just how the um, generator comes out you can adjust it you can add other layers you can do all sorts of things okay so I think that's uh, not too bad I would probably add another layer of dirt uh, under normal circumstances uh, maybe with a different color um, but you know for now I think for this tutorial at least I think I'm happy enough there we go okay so we'll go on to the uh, the wood next uh, which should be a simpler job uh, so I shall talk to you in the next section okay so for this wood uh, I want to make a copy of this wood rough so right click on that and duplicate it and then I want to make this one a lighter so I'm going to take the, the vibrancy and take it up because what I want to do is have this blend in nicely and you know have some younger looking wood uh, you know uh, the worn end uh, yeah, the worn areas so the top and the, the bottom so for that I'm going to right click add a black mask now I can either paint directly on this mask or I can add another paint layer I prefer to add a, a paint layer below it because it gives me a little bit more flexibility so what I want to do is around the top here I'm just going to scale that brush down I'm still on my dirt brush to give myself some variation I'm just painting around the top there there we go just to show that that wood at the top there is you know maybe bashed against some stuff and worn away and so on and similarly at the bottom we'll do the same so we'll do a bit more around the bottom there we go right I think that's about good okay next um, I'm going to add a layer up here and I might actually do it with the duplicate of this one which I will raise above now one thing to note here is uh, I don't want these to keep going on the height so I'm going to turn the height off I'm going to rely on the bottom one for the height I'm not going to convert it to a normal here because uh, yeah it would take me ages to explain uh, this one um, and I, I think you know when on the metal we uh, we did a pretty good explanation so I'm just going to take the vibrance down on that so this one is going to be our dirt layer so I'm going to right click 
and uh, add a black mask and then we'll add a generator to that black mask and we'll use the dirt generator again and that should now blend that in uh, quite nicely with the um, the lighter wood below it so up here you see it's gone dark and then it's gone to our lighter wood it's dark around uh, the bottom of the you know where the hammer joins the shaft and we've got a little darkness um, in between the uh, the wraps which is good so again we can enhance this by right clicking and adding a paint layer to there and now if I make my brush a little smaller and start painting in here what color are we painting we're painting in white I'm just going to add a little bit of extra dirt between these wraps to you know give it a little bit more of more of an effect okay do that on the other side as well nothing too um, exaggerated nothing too stark just adding a few touches here and there maybe a few just from a distance down the front and then down the back there we go okay so that's pretty good and that matches I think quite well with the actual uh, the hammerhead as well so yeah that was a, a quick one really and another quick one will be these leather uh, straps which we'll have a look at in the next section so I'll talk to you then okay so the leather is going to be a very similar uh, kind of process so first of all I'm going to duplicate it so right click and duplicate and then once that's duplicated I'm going to uh, lighten the color by upping the vibrancy there we go and then we're going to add a black mask with a generator this time I want to pick up the edges hopefully the edges will come in nicely uh, I'll use metal edge wear there we go now if I have a look at the mask now we'll see what we're getting and I might want to adjust this somewhat uh, so let's take grunge out yeah I don't have good edges on this that's okay for this particular one we can uh, have a look let's take the wear level down there we go not really picking up the edges but we are picking up something uh, because this is such a small detail and a small you know edge uh, I think that you know expecting it to pick up automatically is um, a big ask so yeah let's do something else let's get rid of this metal edge wear and then I'll just add a paint layer instead uh, la, 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 paint there we go and what I want to do is go around this and add in a few scutchels around those edges you notice it's going on everything but because it's held within this folder it's going to be constrained uh, in that area I think my jitter is a little much now so let's go up remember I changed that earlier let's take that position jitter down a little and then just work my way down I want to do both ends at the same time and it might actually be easier to do this uh, on the material uh, layer just to be able to see how it's uh, working as we go there we go so that'll take me a little while uh, which is perfectly normal uh, I'm going to darken up this lower one a little because I think it's a little light it's not enough contrast there we go that's much more like it and then whoops back onto the mask again I'm going to make this a little smaller 
and that will be able to you do much finer kind of uh, drawings there or strokes rather okay so I'm gonna perhaps speed this bit up a bit and then when, uh, when we come back we'll go on to another little piece Okay, so with that done, uh, I can perhaps uh, bring these a little closer together. This is a little dark, but it was helpful to be darker while I was uh, doing that little bit of painting. So let's lighten that up a bit. Not that much. <laughs> Somewhere around there, I think. And I could perhaps... bring this up a little bit it's a little a little too light for me there we go somewhere along those lines and on my top layer here I'm going to turn off height and roughness um, I want it to change so on the substance itself it gives me a roughness uh, value so I can take that right down um, but actually what I want is the other way around so I'm going to go to the lower layer and reduce the roughness to give that a little shininess and the edge then will remain dull just switch over to rough there and you should be able to see that okay so what's next uh, let's pop that back to material uh, I want to put something over the top of all of this uh, so let's uh, add a new layer so let's right click add fill oops I didn't mean to add a fill to that uh, I meant to add a fill there and then drag it into the folder there we go and let's whoops I want color whoops alt click color so just color there uh, and we'll have roughness so colour I'm going to go sort of a dark-ish or a just beyond mid grey and then we'll add a black mask to this and a generator and then we'll add some dirt in now it's a bit difficult to see at the moment uh, so what we'll do is give this a silly colour there we go and that's where our dirt is coming so what can we do with that well let's get rid of that so we'll use a darker uh, or maybe even a lighter color to you know pick it out let's go darker I think that's more like it and then because this is uh, very rough or dirt tends to be rougher than everything around it we'll we'll pop that to a, uh, a big rough value and if I find this leather actually and let's have a look at the roughness layer there we go so that's very white it's very white if I take that down I want that to be a little bit more shiny well a lot more shiny than the edge and then this one oh, there we go that's a little darker again okay so that's a uh, kind of very uh, basic go through um, you know texturing this hammer uh, the main thing I wanted to, you to get out of it was the uh, the height and putting the height to normal because that's quite a yeah it's, it's quite a handy technique um, I've, I've tried all sorts of ways of doing it and this one seems to be the uh, the most reliable um, if you have the things on separate layers and such like 
you know actually hiding the uh, you know or turning off the height uh, portion of it is quite difficult and you end up texturing on a model that's not quite right um, is there anything else I would do to this well one more thing perhaps uh, I might put a little symbol uh, on the hammerhead uh, and then tie that into the dirt so yeah we'll have that one last thing and then we'll be done so I'll talk to you then okay so I want to add the uh, at least the hint of a symbol on the side of this and to do that we need to update our layers here so I can uh, on this height layer add a paint layer between these two so if I add paint here and then drag that between the fill and the uh, the paint and the fill because so I want those to uh, combine together and then feed into the height to normal so on the paint layer to make sure we've only got height selected and then we can set our value so we can either go positive or negative uh, let's try positive see what it looks like and then if I paint on there you'll see that we get a outline of a symbol going on there with some dirt on it which you yeah, know gives us something to go so for the brush uh, I've selected a, a basic hard and then in my alphas I've just had a look at the Celtic symbols we've got to work with and uh, well let's try this one so if I make my brush a little bigger there and plop that down you'll see it goes into our into our dirt design basically so you know it's just highlighting it and give, adding a little bit of detail so we I mean we could do that anywhere we want we could do it with any symbol we want uh, we could even rotate it with the uh, control left click button and then pop that in there maybe even um, pick a second symbol let's try this one this time I'm going to add uh, mirror X's can I add it as well can I add them both at the same time no it's not gonna let me never mind uh, so I'll have to do it on both sides this time so if I make that a bit smaller pop that there I'll get it both sides and then I'll do the same on the other side which will give it a bit of variation there we go okay so that's adding a symbol into our dirt pattern and that's about as much as I was going to do I think uh, we have now uh, a reasonably nice hammer um, it's low poly ish or as low as I could get it um, it's not going to use any height maps uh, when we take it out to use it externally we're going to have normal maps uh, which means that it's going to look good uh, because if I was relying on a height map uh, I would have to either subdivide it m uh, many times uh, or increase the geometry such that you know um, displacement would work let's have a look at it in uh, rendered view let's go over to the render there we go now I'll change my background because I hate that one uh, don't hate it it's just not very nice uh, where is it ah there it is uh, so I find the Gdansk shipyard gives a nice kind of lighting uh, but then I never really like to look at the uh, the background so there we go so there's our hammer and it's relatively quick it's a lot quicker once you get the hang of it uh, than it would be to you know in this tutorial it took me far longer to explain it than it will be for you to do it I hope that uh, <laughs> makes some sort of sense okay so I hope you got some out of this um, take care if you've got any questions please ask in the comments and I'll talk to you again soon